السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد so welcome to our final session inshallah ta'ala in preparation for this month of Ramadan which starting بإذن الله عز وجل this coming Friday at sundown the moment the sun goes down on Friday night inshallah عز وجل that's the announcement for the beginning of the month of Ramadan that's when the rahmat and the, all the khayrat of Ramadan begins inshallah ta'ala as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa promised that once Ramadan begins and starts, the shayateen will be chained, the gates of Jahannam will be closed, the gates of Jannah will be open, or the gates of heaven will be open for people. So this is the golden opportunity for us to recalibrate, press that button, reset, and start fresh, insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. How do we do that? So the first thing we need to observe is to keep it sincere. The most important and most valuable lesson that we should observe in this month of Ramadan is working on your heart. To work on your heart. A lot of us, they focus on what? Focus on reading the Quran, praying tahajjud, doing the sunnah and the nafil and everything in between. Like we put so much physical effort in it. But we miss the major point of all these a'mal. Why do we even need to do all these good deeds? The purpose of that is obviously to work on this heart. Here in this hadith, Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala wa ardah, in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man sama Ramadan imana wa ahtisaban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanba. In Sayyid al-Bukhari al-Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in this hadith, whoever fasts Ramadan, if you fast Ramadan, imana wa ahtisaban, imana which means out of sincere faith, out of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ahtisaban hoping for the reward, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will clean your records. Which means basically you're going to start with a clean slate on that day. In the other narration, Sahih Muslim, the Prophet also said, Man qama Ramadan imana wa ahtisaban. If you spend the night in doing tahajjud and taraweeh and qiyamul layl, again, imanan wa ahtisaban, out of sincerity in the heart, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and hoping for the reward, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it happen for you. You have a golden opportunity, day and night, for your sins to be forgiven. For your record to be wiped clean completely. You have that opportunity every single day, every single night. So make sure to keep it sincere. The second thing is that make it worth it. What does that mean? In this hadith, Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala wa ardah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, Rubba sa'imin laysa lahu min siyamihi illa al-ju'u wal-atash. Wa rubba qa'imin laysa lahu min qiyamihi illa al-sahar. Fi rawaya al-sahar wa al-ta'ab. In this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, look, some people they fast, but they get absolutely nothing out of their fasting except what? Getting thirsty and getting hungry. That's what they're getting out of it. And he says, قال, Some people they wake up at night and they stay up all night in tahajjud and qiyamul layl. وَلَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ قِيَامِهِ إِلَّا السَّهَرُ وَالتَّعَبُ They get absolutely nothing out of their qiyam except sleepless night and getting fatigued. Like the physical fatigue. But does it transform them? Does it change their heart? Does it bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the purpose of, of, of siyam, is taqwa, to increase your taqwa and your righteousness? Is it bring you any closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is why it is so important to observe that sense of sincerity, to observe that sense of sincerity in your heart, and again, make the ibadah of Ramadan worth it for you. Ramadan has etiquette and adab. There are a lot of etiquette, a lot of adab, uh, that, of course, alhamdulillah, it's opened for everybody. But then each and every one of us, we have uh, something we focus on. Like, what is it that you want to do in Ramadan? What do you focus on in Ramadan? Not all of us are good with qiyamul layl and tahajjud. But guess what? I'm probably good with uh, helping in the kitchen, preparing the meals, put them in boxes, feed those who are fasting, alhamdulillah. Some of us not even have, don't have that time for this. So what do I do? I am good with dua. I just sit down and make dua. I make a long dua and list dua for the ummah. And make a lot of dua. Some of us, mashallah, with the Quran, that's what they do. So there are a lot of, a lot of ibadat, a lot of a'mal and khair that we can do in the month of Ramadan. And each one of us has an equal opportunity to enjoy this Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. So therefore, let's start with surveying you guys. I want to hear from you right now. I want you to pull out your phones and scan this for me. <clears throat> pull out your phone, jama'a. Go ahead. And answer this question. Simple question. What is the one thing you like to do most in Ramadan? Besides sleeping, okay? 
besides sleeping, because sleeping in Ramadan, subhanAllah, it tastes even different. It's so good. But besides sleeping, what is it that you like to do the most during the month of Ramadan? <clears throat> Some of you are very, very sincere, Masha, about their answers. <clears throat> okay, you guys got it? Let's see what is this community is all about, mashallah. Bismillah. Let's see the results. <clears throat> Over here. So here, what are we getting from you guys? Some of you say, mashallah, I would like to focus on taraweeh, tahajjud and Quran, eating iftar, of course, who can beat that, Ajima? <laughs> That's probably the best part of Ramadan. Taraweeh with the community, reading Quran, contemplating on the Quran. Someone is, uh, uh, of course, supporting that. Praying Taraweeh, pray more Salah at the Masjid. Alhamdulillah, here, very, very see. Taraweeh, making dua, feel, uh, uh, feeling to, of breaking of the fast. Taban, of course, that moment when you break the fast, it's the most beautiful moment. Iftar, iftar, iftar and jama'ah. Okay, so at least somebody said, I want to do iftar and jama'ah, right? Less eating and more focus on ibadah. Iftar with friends, ibadah and charity, charity, making dua, night khatras and tahajjud, ibadah, taraweeh, and Quran studies, reading Quran, taraweeh, and reading Quran, adhkar, cutting disobedience and implementing more ibadat and sunnah, going to the masjid, reading Quran, better from an environment, recite the Quran, take opportunity to explain with Ramadan about the non, to the non Muslims. My kids break in their fast, watching them, it's so enjoyable, alhamdulillah. I make a lot of dua. Consistency to improve the end of Ramadan, making dua with the family, learn more about Islam. What is the most common thing that was mentioned over here? Anyone noticed? noticed? Which one? Taraweeh. Why? Because in Ramadan, it's so boring to do things alone. When you are alone, it doesn't feel the same. I, I want to feel that, that congregation. You know, just the sight of walking to the masjid and seeing all these people, men, women, children, they're all coming. At what time? When everybody else is sleeping. You come for the taraweeh and just like, what a sight, subhanAllah. It really teaches you a big lesson over here. That lesson for you to remember that you can, you can do things differently. While everybody else is sleeping, look, you're starting your life. Your day starts after Isha these days, subhanAllah. That's why I feel encouraged to see something that would help you break your, your, your bad habits and old habits. And it in inspires you. It encourages you to do that. But yeah, the other thing that was mentioned over here, ibadah, specifically dua that was mentioned. So we do something in congregation, such as the taraweeh. And then I have my private moment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dua moment. We do it in congregation. And privately. So two major, two major things we'd love to do in the month of Ramadan. Let's see the second question right now. Bismillah. Scan it, please. What comes between you and what do you enjoy doing in Ramadan? If this is the most enjoyable thing for you in Ramadan, to come to the taraweeh or making dua, for example, what are your obstacles? What's preventing you from enjoying Ramadan anyway? And if any brothers or sisters are watching us online and you guys are posting with us as well, if you make your answer in a different color, make sure that the padlet that you use is a different color so we recognize it's coming from someone who's not here in the masjid with us. It would be great as well if you show us where you're actually watching from. So what are the obstacles? If you know that taraweeh is my enjoyable moment, my dua is my enjoyable moment, okay, so what is preventing you from getting the best out of Ramadan then? Let's see we'll have, what answers we have over here. All right, bismillah. Number one, laziness. I admit it, I'm lazy. Maybe you're eating too much, Ajumah, that's why you get lazy with taraweeh. So eat less a little bit. Family obligations. Fatigue, work, less caffeine. <laughs> well, maybe it's the time for you to start you know, weaning off caffeine this time as well. So, and two people, more people said, you know, I agree. You know, caffeine is my problem here. <clears throat> One bad day, Lamstan. Work pressure, office work, family and work responsibilities, work and kids, my own shortcomings. None of it, but I want to, 
I want to test your tamiz. <laughs> Who's that, <laughs> Jama? Okay, someone is commenting on a bread that I actually baked last weekend. Okay, work. Well, you actually, you know what? You can dream about it because Ramadan is starting anyway now. <laughs> work. As a mom reading the Quran is a challenge to finish the khatma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you, Rabbil Alameen. Work, social media, and that's one of the biggest things right now, unfortunately, that we don't really pay attention to. The biggest, the robber of your Ramadan, really, your social media. You grab the phone, that's it, you're done for two hours. And you realize, oh my God, I missed it for two hours. I should have done this earlier than that. So be careful with that. Work commitments, work flexibility, distractions, efficient scheduling, video games and sleep, mashallah. Sleeping 16 hours, ya Allah. What do you do for a living? <laughs> Sleeping? <laughs> Being distracted, bad habits, work, too much eating, work, not fasting throughout the year because you don't get used to it, filling the tummy, obviously, office and work, sleep, work, too much food and iftar, household responsibilities, time, eating too much, burned out, overeating, cooking for a family who enjoy food and wants variety, mashallah. <laughs> tired from, tired, somebody's from Maryland, mashallah, welcome to watch with us. And then TikTok. MashaAllah. Thank you for your honesty. All right. So what is the most common thing that people complain about over here, Jama'ah? What is it? Work. work. Which means your responsibilities to your family, to your job, to your work. Can you avoid that? Now, some people, they make strategies, which is basically they save their, their vacation nights or days, I mean, to the end of the month of Ramadan, so they can have the last 10 days, alhamdulillah, with the Eid, free of any responsibilities. Others, uh, mashallah, they, they, they have other arrangements where they start working for themselves, like have their, alhamdulillah, their income is coming, you know, no matter what. And mashallah, they take their time with that. But you don't have to be apologetic for doing what you have to do. But can I use my rest, the rest of my day and weekends to improvise? And of course, catch up on the thing that I should have been doing. Also, can I re re rearrange my schedule, sleeping and waking up and eating and so on? Start doing this right now, inshallah ta'ala, so that the first few days of Ramadan, once you adjust, bidnillah, you'll have start running, inshallah ta'ala, smoothly. The last question we have here right now. Now that we have a problem, our work, our family responsibilities come in the way. So what am I going to do about this? Find me the solution, Jama'ah. Find me the solution. What do you plan to do this year, inshallah, to ensure that you have enough and more of what you enjoy to do the most? If you know that you love to do taraweeh, you know that you love to do dua, but your house responsibilities, your work responsibilities are not helping you at all. So what, what are you going to do in this year, inshallah ta'ala, to ensure that this will happen, inshallah, and you will use it and you enjoy it properly? I oh, mean, some people are giving actually dangerous suggestions of here, Zuma. Let's see what we have here. <clears throat> Number one, quit, quit work. <laughs> Please don't do that. <laughs> and you're going to blame it on me and say, Astaghfirullah, Shaykh told me, Alhamdulillah, will provide for me, inshallah ta'ala. Allah will always provide. Allah subhanahu wa will always provide, but that's not the way you go about it. So some people say, quit your work. You know what? If your work is so boring, that is not really worth it anymore. Quit your work. Make dua in Ramadan. Hopefully after Ramadan you get a good job, inshallah ta'ala. <laughs> Eat less. Beautiful. Eat less. Especially at the start time. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to stand up in taraweeh, jama'ah. Time management and planning ahead. Mentally prepare and plan. It's all really in the head. When you start saying to yourself that I'm tired, I'm tired, then you're going to really, the body is going to react to it as being fatigued. But no matter how tired you are, if you keep telling yourself that, inshallah, the night is going to be awesome. I'm going to be doing the, my best, inshallah. Your body will respond to that positively, inshallah ta'ala. Plan well and remove distractions. Eat less, inshallah. Uh, last ten, of course, take it off. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, make it easy for you. Stay away from social media and Netflix. Stay more focused. Manage time and schedule activities. Stay away from phone. Uh, um, Someone from, Ris from Frisco, mashallah, watching with us and saying, write out my dua ahead of time. Obviously, if you have a long list, write it down. So when the time comes to raise your hand, you know what you're going to be saying, inshallah. Plan. Doing best to learn Quranic Arabic so that you can enjoy what you recite and read and listen to. Don't, I don't know, may Allah make it easy for you and help you tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Volunteer. 
Listen to Sheikh Yasser. Well, I don't know about that. Stop playing a lot of games. Not really sure. We'll see. We're going to teach you some stuff here tonight, inshallah. Get support from the family and friends. Rearrange your work schedule and share family responsibilities. Plan with your spouse, with your wife. Um, I can't cut back on the responsibility, but I will try to pray with greater sincerity. Beautiful. Focus on the quality. It's not just the quantity. Be sincere with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you can guarantee, if you can work on this, inshallah, I hope you will get the best out of what you do, no matter how little that is. Plan your time better. Delete social media and finish the Quran four pages after every salah. You know what? You could do that. And we'll take, inshallah ta'ala, on the last eight days, inshallah azza wa jal, to leave basically the, the, whatever you want to do. Uh, make, put your list of priorities in the right order. Go to good iftars. Good iftars? Just go to iftar, Because <laughs> it's going to taste the same no matter what. You're just breaking your fast at that moment, trust me. Preparing and planning for Ramadan and reciting more Quran. Some people, they're fasting for the wrong reason, I don't know. We fast just to enjoy the moment when we break our fast. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you enjoy it in the dunya and the akhirah, ya Rabbil Alameen. Stay consistent, inshallah, and don't get angry. Caffeine pills at suhoor, <laughs> is that okay? I guess so. I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a, a caffeine pill. Just get, drink your coffee at suhoor. Why not? Uh, end of, uh, of day, journal entry. Yeah, why not? Just always write down what you've done, what you could do. Plan, inshallah ta'ala, cook it ahead. Easy meals. Cancel my Netflix and all social media already. Jazakallah khair. Uh, again, put your priority in the right order. Um, you don't have to do everything. Just focus on what you can do the best, inshallah ta'ala and pray all taraweeh in Valley Ranch. Well, you're more than welcome to do it here, but why don't you go to different masajid? Mashallah, we have beautiful masajid in the community over here. Wonderful qaris everywhere. Enjoy different flavors, different sounds, and different experiences in the community. Tonight, inshallah ta'ala, what I want to share with you, to summarize, 10 things and 10 things. The, mo the, the point or the meaning of these 10 moments, inshallah, 10 things to do and 10 things to avoid, is to get us that, that, to optimize our uh, use of time in Ramadan. Not all of us can do all these 10. And not all of us, you know, good at doing, again, um, the tahajjud all night, every single night. Not all of us can finish the Quran, you know, from cover to cover. But find one thing. If you see that your time is so consumed by work, by responsibilities, that I can't. If I try, I'll feel frustrated because I'm not being able to do what I wanted to do. Then why don't you just, just uh, uh, try to see things that you can do best, focus on that, inshallah ta'ala, and get the best out of it in Ramadan. Here are ten, 10 things I would like to suggest for you to do in the month of Ramadan. Number one, eating suhoor late. I know you might trivialize that, saying like, really? I mean, what kind of uh, accomplishment is that? Look, it's not about the food. It's about what the Prophet promised over here. He said, baraka. If you do it right, you get barakah. Allah will bless you. He'll bless your time. Probably bless your fast. If you maintain doing suhoor properly. And what does it mean? The Prophet said, baraka means eat your suhoor, the pre-dawn meal, because you'll find blessing in that, in that moment, in that, in that meal. And the Prophet وسلم, he even actually said, he recommended for us, he says, People will always be doing, will always do good as long as they delay their suhoor and they rush and break in their fast. So eating suhoor late, I know it sounds like you know, a big thing to wake up 10 minutes before the adhan and prepare a meal and all that stuff. It is not about the food. Remember that. It's about gaining the barakah, the blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised in this meal. So if you can focus on this every single night, every single night, just focus on at least waking up 10, 15 minutes before the adhan, where you eat a few dates and just drink with the intention to gain the barakah. That is an enough thing to do, subhanAllah, in the month of Ramadan. Just do that. It's a matter of quality, once again, not a matter of quantity. Similar to that, the break and fast, when you break your fast, do it early. Why? Because even the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's promising us like, لا يزال الناس بخير. Look, you're always doing well. You're doing great. As long as you rush into breaking your fast and you delay your suhoor. So these are little things we don't pay attention to. Because we always think of accomplishment as doing something hard. 
something physically tiring. But here, the Prophet ﷺ is promising you with blessings and barakah simply by just delaying your suhoor meal and rushing into breaking your fast. Very simple. Make sure to do that, inshallah ta'ala, this month of Ramadan. So I hope that you guys, even the, for the sisters particularly, if you prepare the meals, inshallah azza wa jal, making sure that, you know what, I'm not going to finish the meal one second before the iftar time. No, finish it 10 minutes, 15 minutes, to a half an hour even before the actual iftar time, and then have everything ready on the table, so that when that time for Adan comes, everybody's sitting down there around the table, making dua, making dhikr. So the moment we hear the Adan, inshallah ta'ala, we break our fast together bi idnillahi azza wa jal. And by doing that, you'll find a lot of khair, a lot of barakah, because people sitting there, everybody's now, just like the sister, she said, look, looking at my kids breaking their fast, that's a very joyful moment. So you sit down there, and you see them, and you make dua for them. And they, subhanAllah, they, they, they enjoy the food, they make dua for you. There is a lot of khair happens, a lot of khair happen around those beautiful moments of the suhoor and the iftar. Number three, your dua list. Your dua list. Now, when you start waking up for suhoor, you realize, wait a minute, but that is one of the most precious times of the whole day and night. Then the Prophet says in, in the hadith that uh, 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a manner that suits his majesty, he descends from the seventh heaven to the earthly heaven. And there he, uh, in, the, in the last third of the night, the last portion of the night, and he asked his servant, who are they? Where are they? Those who are looking for khayr, those who are asking Allah for things so he can give it to them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is that precious moment. I'm already waking up for suhoor anyway. I want to get the barakah. Then why don't just also get ready with the dua? So in this case, I'm not going to, I'm not going to wake up 10 minutes before the adhan. I'd rather wake up what? Half an hour before the adhan. So what do I do? I do prepare my suhoor and raise my hand and start making my dua. Making my dua for myself, for my family, for my loved ones, for my community, for the world, for the ummah, for those who are misfortunate, you know, they have misfortune in their lives and so on. Like make a lot of dua. Prepare your dua list. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my servants, they ask you about me, I am near. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not answer us through the Prophet sallallahu by saying, قُلْ Tell them that I'm near. No, instead he says, I am here directly. To, re to teach us that lesson, you don't need to have mediums between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's directly between you and Allah azza wa jal. So prepare your list of the dua. Some people might say, wait a minute, do I need to have wudu to make dua? No, you don't have to, to have wudu to make dua. Can I make dua when I'm still in my bed, while I'm still lying down on my bed? Yes, you can make dua in that fashion. Uh, do I have to raise my hands making the dua? No, you don't have to raise your hands in making the dua. Does that dua have to be in Arabic language? No, it doesn't have to be in Arabic language. Uh, can I just make sajda and make dua there? Yes, you can do that. So uh, the dua, what's the best dua to say? There are some phrases from the Prophet wasallam, but the best dua that you could really, really say and do is a dua that comes from the heart. No matter how elegant that is, as long as it's coming from the heart, that is the best dua you could pronounce. And I always remember this story every time I think about that moment, subhanAllah, which is a story was mentioned by one of my shaykh. He goes, one day I was making tawaf around the, I don't know what it was, making tawaf around Arafah. And he said, I heard somebody, the guy was from Egypt actually. He said, I said, I heard somebody making dua, very simple dua, but it's so powerful. So this person was making dua and he was in Arafah, I believe, not tawaf. He was saying, Ya Rabbi, anta arif wa ana arif. Ukutri kalam alush lazma. He goes, my Lord, you know, and I know that you know. Like, you know. You know what I need, basically, let's say. My Lord, you know what I know. And I know that you know what I want. So don't have to say anything else after that. Like, I'm not going to waste my time talking to you. You know exactly what I want, and I know that, you, and I believe you know what I want, so you ought to just do it for me. As simple as it sounds, right? Now, some of us might say, like, really? What kind of dua is that? Well, believe it or not, this could be the most powerful dua. Why? Because it's sincere coming from the heart, from someone who says, I believe, Ya Allah, that you know my need. Do I even need to tell you what it is? I know you know it. I don't have to say it. So fulfill that for me. What a powerful dua, Ya Jama'ah. So instead of looking into these fancy rhyming statements of dua that sounds beautiful when you recite them, that just come maybe from the tongue, not from the heart, just focus on the dua and let it come from the heart. Whatever that is that you want to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do it. Make a long list of dua. It includes what? Everything. Matters of dunya and the akhirah. 
personal and for the community, for your loved ones and others, whatever that is, for the world and the community, just do a lot of dua. And one of the most important dua that we need to, to learn is when we break our fast. As the Prophet taught us in the dua, he says, ذهب الضمع وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. Simple dua. When you come to break your fast, you're now admitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the grace and the blessings of Allah azza wa jal, ذهب الضمع, which means the thirst is going away. خلاص, alhamdulillah, we're done. وابتلت العروق, our veins are now becoming moist right now. That's it, we're drinking water, alhamdulillah, ameen. وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله and the reward is now being recorded with Allah Azza wa Jal. So very simple dua. So if you're going to focus on powerful dua, it's better for you. Number four, the companionship of the Quran. What does that exactly mean? Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told us that on the day of judgment, on the day of judgment, the Quran will come with you. The Quran is going to come with you. And he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the Qur'an will be coming actually with you as what? As a shafi'r. Shafi'r, which means intercessor, like say, like lawyers. The Qur'an is going to be your lawyer, speaker on your behalf. In the other narration, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, The Qur'an comes, and specifically, al-Baqarah and al-Imran, in a way that Allah subhanahu knows how, will come to defend you, testifying for you that, Ya Rabbi, this person used to be I used to recite the Qur'an frequently. And I would love to give my testimony on their behalf. You have lawyers with you. So here, it's your chance and opportunity to start that companionship with the Qur'an so that after Ramadan, you will continue with that, inshaAllah, wa ta'ala. Why so? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us, Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Ramadan is the month when the Qur'an was revealed. So make sure to make plan for the Qur'an. Now, for those who did not attend the session we had on the Qur'an, you can watch it online, inshallah ta'ala, on our YouTube channel. If you go back to the VRIC YouTube channel, inshallah ta'ala, we had a whole session on the Qur'an. How to understand the Qur'an, what to do, what to focus on, and what you could do, inshallah, to make the best Arab recitation of the Qur'an Ramadan. And we suggested for you six points that you need to follow in order for you, even if you don't speak Arabic, how you can connect with the Qur'an in Salat al-Taraweeh, just follow these steps, inshallah ta'ala, and you will find yourself like, wow, I've never really imagined I could understand what the imam is reciting, even though I don't even know Arabic. Six points, you can find them, inshallah ta'ala, on that session. Number five, be generous. Ramadan is a month of generosity. In hadith, Ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala, warda, narrating the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kana ajwad nas He was the most generous of all people, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَكَانَ أَجُدْ مَا يَكُونَ فِي رَمَضَانِ And he most generous in the month of Ramadan. Why? When Jibreel come to visit him. When Jibreel come to visit him to study the Qur'an. So engaging in the Qur'an and having the rahmah and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the angels who come upon us, that should actually encourage you to do more. What kind of generosity we're talking about? Generosity with your money. Generosity with your food. Generosity by feeding those who are actually who are fasting. Generosity in different ways. But obviously here the most important one is what? With the food and with your wealth, to give. And give as if, alhamdulillah, you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you double that and multiply that for you. So you give generously, inshallah ta'ala, there is no limit on your generosity. However, obviously, you're not going to give everything and then start begging people. Make sure to do it, inshallah ta'ala, in the right way, bidnillah azza wa jalla. Number six, feeding those who fast. Out of your generosity, feeding those who fast. Alhamdulillah, we have the uh, uh, what they call the poster outside for those who would like to participate in paying for the expenses to feed the fasting here inshallah in our community because most people think that when you feed the fasting it's only those who are poor that count no not necessarily poor or friends neighbors or relatives even the mothers as they cook food for their children even the, the parents the father when he buys the food so we can be prepared inshallah for the children for the family to to eat all of that counts towards your reward, inshallah, azza wa jal. So even sometimes as you cook, take it as an act of ibadah, jama'ah. For the brothers, when you prepare the date plate, for example, the, the, prepare the drink or the water for your family and for your children while the spouses work on the other side, you are helping each other to feed those who are fasting. And you get reward for that, inshallah, ta'ala. In hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Zayd ibn Khalid al-Juhani radiallahu anhu, qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, man fattara sayman, whoever helps someone who's fasting to break his fast. 
كان له مثل أجره غير أنه لا ينقص من أجر الصائم شيء. You'll get the same reward like theirs without taking away from their reward. And I always remind the husband and wife specifically, talk those moments because sometimes your spouse is too busy. It's too, they're too busy serving, cooking, last thing of the meal and so on. And you hear the adhan. Everybody's now rushing to break their fast. What about your mom? What about your, your, your husband, your, your wife who's busy with the meal and preparing the meal? Why don't you just grab a, a cup of water or maybe a date and say Bismillah, put it, in their, put it in their mouth while they're walking around. Help them break the fast and inshallah break the ice as well between you. Number seven, active worship. <clears throat> Ramadan is not the time to take a break, Jama'ah. Ramadan is not the time to take a break. Ramadan is the time to put your, your, your energy in it, inshallah. You have 11 months of the year to take a break. But Ramadan, it's a very unique timing. In Hadith Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, specifically about the last 10 nights of Ramadan, Kana Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ida Dakhal Ashr, when the last 10 days start, or the last 10 nights start in Ramadan, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they said that he would tighten his, his belt, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his waist belt. It means two things. In the metaphoric expression in the Arabic language, that means basically, and you kind of prepare yourself, like, like we say in English, rolling your sleeves up, which means you're getting ready to, you know, to do work so hard. So that's one meaning. The other meaning is actually tightening his belt, meaning he's not going to approach his spouses anymore. Like that's it, no more time for pleasure. I want to dedicate the last time for the ibadah. So either way, it's more like dedicating your time to liberty, and also, of course, the ibadah and the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And he, he's not just do it for himself, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ahya ahla. He would wake up his family. He would go and says, wake up guys, wake up, bismillah. Last 10 nights, tahajjud, last 10 nights, wake up. So they wake up the whole night. Alhamdulillah, as we come closer and closer to the winter time right now, our nights are getting longer and longer and longer. What does that mean, Jama? You have even a better chance, alhamdulillah, to do better. You have extra time right now to do more during the night. So make sure to use it wisely, inshallah. So those who say, I can't do much during the day, do something during the night, inshallah ta'ala. Number eight, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dhikr. I can't do this, I can't do that. Don't tell me you cannot remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the easiest thing you could do with the maximum khair and the maximum fadl you can get. The Prophet saw some speaker about some of the words of dhikr, such as what? كلمتان خفيفتان على اللسان ثقيلتان في الميزان حبيبتان للرحمن Two statements Very light on the tongue Heavy on the scale Most beloved to the most merciful Subhanahu wa ta'ala What are these words, jama'a? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi Subhanallah al-azim You already know it How often do you say it? That's the question You know that they're very light to pronounce and say But how often do we say them? Ramadan is coming Increase your ibadah, no matter how busy you are, how preoccupied you are. Don't tell me while walking between errands, you cannot just as you walk to say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wa la ilaha illallah, Wa Allahu Akbar, Wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-ali al-azim, Inna lillahi wa inna alayhi raji'un. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad, Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al-azim. Words of dhikr, constantly. So remind yourself, inshallah ta'ala, and if you forgot some of your adhkar, it's the time. Get your phone out, look for the dhikr app that you have on your phone, you haven't opened for a while, go and press on it and see what adhkar you have, remember some of them, memorize new ones, inshallah, and increase your dhikr this month of Ramadan. Number nine, come to the masjid. Come to the masjid. You say, my house is actually a lot of distractions. Uh, when I get to the house, I get lazy and I go to sleep, this and that and so on. Then why don't you just come to the masjid? It's 15 minutes drive, 10 minutes drive, more or less. Still, alhamdulillah, Ramadan is a special time for this. Come more often to the masjid. Also, I don't have a lunch break anymore right now. What am I going to do with that? Whether you take a nap in your car or come to masjid to pray dhuhr. How about you do, do, you do both, inshallah ta'ala. You come to pray dhuhr over here and you take a nap in the car in the garage and in the parking lot over here. And then you go to work. Whatever that you want, but just the point is, Make sure you increase your presence in the masjid, inshallah ta'ala. In Hayat ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu warda, in Sahih al-Bukhari Muslim, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Salatul jama'i tafdulu salatul fadhi, or salatul fadhi, bi 27 daraja. Praying in jama'a is better than praying alone by 27 degrees. 
Not 27 hasana. It's 27 degrees of hasanat. Like the quality, the bulk of the hasanat over here. How much in each, de in each degree? Allah knows. So remember that. 27 degrees, not 27 hasana. So you're talking about a lot of reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who maintain that reward, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Number 10, and the last one here I would like to recommend for, your brother, for my brothers and sisters is Al-I'tikaf. Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He used to do I'tikaf in the month of Ramadan, in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. And in the last year of his life sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did 20 nights, 20 days by the way. He did the last 20 days of the month of Ramadan. You know, it's, it's a, a, an interesting thing that, um, subhanAllah, when it comes to the i'tikaf, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did it for a purpose. Nowadays, we just come for sometimes for socializing. But actually, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he did it exclusively. He had a small tent by himself, and he would stay there in seclusion. What is he doing there? He's praying extra salah. He is making adhkar, he is resting, he is reading the Qur'an sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like he's doing a lot of ibadah during that time, salawatullahi wa sallam He's focusing on the akhirah and he's focusing on, the, on Laylatul Qadr. So if anyone was planning to do it, inshallah ta'ala, I think, I don't know if we still have the registration still open or not, but maybe this is the time for you to do it. If you haven't done it before, try it, try it out. Try it out. The first maybe two, three days are very difficult and hard because you, know, you have to adjust to it. But then subhanAllah, by the time Ramadan is coming to an end, it's very emotional. It becomes extremely emotional to leave. And Rasulullah sallallahu he maintained that in the last few years of his life, sallallahu alayhi until he passed away. So those who can do i'tikaf, alhamdulillah. If you cannot do the i'tikaf for the last 10 days completely, then at least do the nights. And alhamdulillah, we have a full night program every night over here in the masjid, so it can help you stay awake and maintain the ibadah over here, inshallah ta'ala. You can't do all the 10 nights, then at least do on Friday night and Saturday night, because the next day you don't have work. So at least you do two nights, and in this case, you will probably do four nights in the, uh, uh, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, inshallah azza wa jal. And subhanAllah, maybe one of those nights that you would do would help you catch the al Qadr. May Allah make us among those who witness the al Qadr, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So these are 10 things you can do to improve in the month of Ramadan. What about things that you should avoid in the month of Ramadan? 10 things to avoid in the month of Ramadan. I'm going to go through them quickly, inshallah ta'ala. Number one, al-ghafla. Ghafla, heedlessness and forgetful, forgetfulness. What does that mean exactly? Like a jama'ah, it's a precious time. It's a precious time and we treat Ramadan like what? Like any other time of the year. That is ghafla. This is now is basically heedlessness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear in the Quran. He says, Look, al hisab is coming near them. And honestly, especially for us in this time, we are observing some of the, uh, the, the biggest signs of the day of judgment as the Prophet described will come near the end of time. Like what? The desert people becoming rich. They're building lofty and they're competing who has the, subhanAllah, I'm just watching that sight of uh, people competing who has the, the tallest building in, in their country. It's like, wow, are they really trying to expedite the akhirah? I need to come or what's the, what's the story over here? But again, we see the signs and here Allah is telling us, you see the signs, you're just living like, like there's, no, there's no day of judgment. Make sure in this Ramadan to avoid ghafla, which means distractions. Anything that you know will distract you from the month of Ramadan, from benefit of the month of Ramadan, try to minimize that and reduce that, inshallah. Number two, avoid eating too much food. I know that Ramadan, some of us say, they say the, the best thing they enjoy in Ramadan is iftar, 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 and iftar. And as a result, they go to look for best iftar, yani, mashallah, in the community, right? But remember, my dear brothers and sisters, please, Ramadan is to teach us that it's not really about food. By the way, and subhanAllah, nowadays, the way we eat, never ever in the history of mankind that people had so much food the way we eat today. Never. Because in the past, what we eat today used to be eaten on the, on the, on the uh, tables of who? Lords and kings and all these people. But the average people, they just had nothing really. And now, mashallah, you go to a restaurant, all you can eat, and you're just like, oh my God. It's really like a feast every single day you have it, subhanAllah. So please, in Ramadan, minimize that. 
and remember this hadith in Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam who said, "Ma mala ibn Adam yuaan qat shar min batni," that the son of Adam never felt a vessel worse than his stomach. And then he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that if you had to, if you had to eat this much, he said, "Qala sallallahu alaihi wasallam, fathurutun li taamihi, wa thurutun li sharabihi, wa thurutun li nafasihi." Then divide that to three thirds: one third for food, one third for drink, and one third for breathing. Are we clear on that, Jama? One third for food. One third for drink, and one third for breathing. Right? Now, um, how do I know that I reach my 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 third? The measurement is very easy. Always stop eating when you still have desire to eat more. Always remember that. Stop eating when you still have desire to eat more. Because if you stop after you know have no desire to eat more, what does that exactly mean? You fill the whole vessel. And now there's no room for water even. And I keep joking about this in our culture. People, they brag about it. say, no, 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 I don't do that stuff. Because I know what my third is, right? And they keep saying, Food will fill it all the way to the rim. Water finds its way down. The air doesn't have to go through. Like we'll manage. We don't have to breathe, basically. You don't have to get to that level, Jama'ah. So please make sure to manage your food consumption Stop eating when you still have desire to eat more. Number three, too much sleep. Don't get sick in Ramadan by depriving your body from enough sleep. But at the same time, don't sleep in the most virtuous times. Readjust your sleeping habits and hours during the month of Ramadan. Teach yourself to wake up half an hour, one hour before Fajr. Make sure to take a nap after you come back from work. Readjust your sleeping hours. So that inshallah ta'ala you have the optimum you know, uh, usage of your time. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was mentioned in front of him about somebody who slept through the night all the way until Fajr. And he couldn't believe that people do that. فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ بَعْلَ الشَّيْطَانَ بِأُدْنِهِ That's someone the shaitan urinated in his ears. Now if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam come to our time, what is he going to see Allah al-Musta'a? He didn't just urinate the jama'ah. So therefore, we need to make sure that we don't sleep the whole night. Make some portion of that night for the ibadah and for the ta'ah. Number four, avoid killing time. Surah Al-Asr is that, that explanation about the value of time for us. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ إِلَّا لَذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاصَوا بِالصَّبْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swearing by time. Not any part of the time. He said what? وَالْعَصْرِ The ulama, they say, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by al-asr? which is the late afternoon time, right? Some they say it's dahr, which means time in general. But specifically he chose the time that is after Asr, the late afternoon. Why is that? Because what he says about it afterwards, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْتِ That insan is a constant state of loss. Why? Because if you look at yourself at Asr time, what are you mostly doing after Asr time? It's more like downtime for us. Some of us are just driving just to get home. Some of us are just too tired to do anything, so we just kind of like sit down there and do nothing. It's basically the most wasted time of the day and the night. So that's why Allah says, like, look, you're losing that time. You should be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that time, making dhikr and ibadah. And that's why one of the best times to make dua is what a jama'ah, sometime between Asr and Maghrib, to remind you, hey, don't stay lazy, don't stay lazy all that time. There's a special moment there that when you make dua, Allah will accept that from you, Rabbil Alameen. So, Stop killing your time by wasting it in non, yani non-useful things. Number five, bad company, the bad influence. Those people could, could cause you to lose that time, that precious time of the month of Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the people that you befriend in this dunya, He says, Those whom you call friends today, those whom you call them friends today, one day, if they do not bring you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one day, on the Day of Judgment, you will be looking at them as your, your enemy. Why? Because it's because of you I missed Ramadan. Because of you, I couldn't do this, I couldn't do that. Don't put yourself in this position. Ramadan is a time to start re-evaluating really your ibadah and also your friends. You need to re-evaluate your friendship in Ramadan. Is my friendship really bringing me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where is the purpose of Ramadan? Or are they just, you know, kind of like part of my distractions? Every time I say, hey, let's go to the masjid, come on, man. Hey, let's, guys, uh, let's go and uh, uh, pray tarawih. Fajr is about in half an hour to start. No, no, we're going to eat and just go to sleep. 
Subhanallah, make sure that you have good friends who will help you, inshallah, and cl come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number six, avoid arguments. Arguments. Even if you were right. And Ramadan is the time when a lot of people suddenly they become, mashallah, mufti. If you go to your relatives' yani, gatherings, mashallah, especially around iftar, all of them are talking about fatwa things, fatwa stuff. Sheikh said this, I heard Sheikh said that before Ramadan, they're talking about gas prices, they're talking about tomatoes and, and potatoes and all that stuff. Suddenly in Ramadan, everybody's now started doing fatwas. And as a result, everybody argues. The Ramadan start, didn't start. You're wrong, we're right. This, that, and so on, so The Prophet ﷺ is telling us in this hadith, I will guarantee you a house in Al-Jannah, whether it's in the suburbs of the center of Al-Jannah, the heart of Al-Jannah, the highest place in Al-Jannah. Anywhere in Jannah is enough for me, Jama'ah. But the Prophet said, look, I'm going to give you, I promise you, a house in a prime location in Jannah. To whom? He said, لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْمِرَاءَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مُحِقَّةً I will guarantee this house for you if you leave argumentation and arguments even if you were right. Like if you were right, you're not supposed to argue. Then what about when you're wrong? Why is it not even right to argue when you were right even? Because when it, come, when it becomes an argument, no one is listening. Do you understand, Jumaa? When it becomes argument, when it's discussion, it's fine. We're learning from each other. But now that it becomes argument, it's all about now winning the debate. And in this, in this situation, no one is listening anymore. Everybody's just waiting to speak. Everybody just wants to prove themselves right. And as a result, we get nowhere with that. And it might cause people to start, of course, in having hatred to each other and causing so much damage. So remember, don't argue in Ramadan, especially in Ramadan. Number seven, avoiding sins. as saghir wal kabir major and minor. May Allah protect us from this, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul ya ibadi alladheena asrafu ala anfusim la taqnatu min rahmatillah. O my servants who have transgressed against themselves, do not despair of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Alhamdulillah. One of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making Ramadan one of the mukaffarat of al-dhunub, expiations of sins. In the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned some of the expiations of sins. He says, Allah adulukum ala mukaffarat al-dhunub. Shall I guide you to what really help you officiate or erase your sins? And he mentioned as-salatu ila salah the five daily prayers. And Ramadan ila Ramadan. And from Ramadan to the next Ramadan, he said, Sallallahu All of them will help erase your sins. So Ramadan is an opportunity for us, alhamdulillah, to recalibrate, reset the button, and start fresh, inshallah ta'ala. So do not waste that opportunity on falling into mistakes and errors and sins. We're humans after all, but alhamdulillah, the incentive to commit sins is less and less in Ramadan, for many reasons. One of them, the shayateen are trapped. Number two, your desires are now also at the minimum because you're fast, you're tired, you're exhausted, and also, Spiritually speaking, you're thinking about the akhirah more than the dunya. So a lot of incentives to do better. So avoid sins as much as you can. Number eight, avoid the harvest of the tongue. Of all the sins that you need to worry about the most is what, jama'ah? This, the tongue. Hadith Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was speaking about the, 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 the harvest of the tongue and how much it damages people, how much it causes them to go to Jahannam, so when Mu'ad radiallahu anh, he, he, he kind of was surprised when the Prophet sallallahu spoke about how much people they fall into the haram because of this. He goes, Qala ya Rasulullah, aw mu'akhadu wa nahnu bima naqool? Are we going to be held accountable for what we say? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi he was shocked and surprised that Mu'ad didn't even know that. Qala thakiratka ummuka ya Mu'ad, wa hal yakubbu al-nasa fi al-nari ala wujuhim illa hasadu al-sinatihim? Like what throws people in Jahannam over their faces? More than the harvest of their tongue. The harvest of your tongue is extremely, extremely dangerous. No matter how much good deeds you have accumulated over the years, the Prophet ﷺ is warning us on the Day of Judgment. He says, muflis. Do you know who the bankrupt person is? They said, yeah, it's the one who doesn't have money, gold or silver. He goes, no, no, that's easy. That's not the real muflis. The real muflis, the one who's really bankrupt, he says, is the one Sallallahu Alaihi says, the one who comes with a'mal kajibal tihama. Good deeds, the size of the mount of tihama. But then he cursed at this person. He was backbiting this person. He hurt this person. They all take from their hasanat until it's gone. And when there's not enough to compensate, they will take from their sayyat, add to his or hers. Until this person is completely doomed. So be careful. 
the harvest of the tongue is very, very dangerous. The Prophet says in this hadith, مَن لَمْ يَدْعَ قَوْلَ الزُّورِ وَالْعَمَلَ بِهِ فَلَيْسَ لِلَّهِ حَاجَةٌ فِي أَنْ يَدْعَ طَعَامَهُ وَشَرَابَهُ If you're not going to guard this tongue, fasting is useless. That doesn't mean it break the fast though, it doesn't break the fast. Backbiting or lying, it does not break the fast. But definitely, definitely, it kills the spirit of fasting for you. And the reward of course is minimized. And two more inshallah ta'ala, things to avoid. Al-Wisal. Some of us get really excited with fasting. And they start practicing something called wisal, which means to connect the day and the night together. To connect the day and the night. It was a practice that they used to do at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, but then the Messenger of Allah, he warned the people again, he goes, don't do that. Do not connect the day with the night. But then they said, Qalu Ya Rasulullah, but you do it. You're doing it. He said, yes, I am. Walakin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yut'imini wa yasqini. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is providing for me. How? Allah knows. But Allah, he, he created us, he created him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, don't practice wisal, and the moment you hear the adhan of maghrib, break your fast. Some people, they say, well, I don't feel comfortable breaking my fast, you know, at maghrib time. So what do they do? They wait 10 minutes, they wait 15 minutes, and some people, they say, let me pray maghrib first, and then I'll break my fast. Don't do this, please. Do not do this. Because the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that you break your fast right away. And finally, of the thing that we should avoid in Ramadan, following our own desires, even if it was halal. Even if it was halal. I mean, during the night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made halal for husband and wife to be intimate with each other. During the night, Allah made halal for husband and wife to be intimate to each other, with each other. Even the last 10 nights. But you better avoid that in the last 10 nights. But pursuing these desires during the day can be extremely dangerous. However, it's still permissible to a husband and wife you know, to be affectionate. But not, of course, to be intimate. But to be affectionate is okay. However, if you cannot control yourself, then avoid these desires because you don't want to fall into the trap of this man, this Bedouin, and what happened to him. This Bedouin one day came to the Prophet وسلم, and he was slapping his face, flapping his head and his chest, and he just like, halakt, halakt. I'm ruined, I'm ruined. And the Prophet ﷺ, he goes, Why like a malak? What happened to you? Why did you say that for? He goes, Waqatu ala ahli fi nahari Ramadan. I was, I don't know, I just couldn't hold it. I just, I got intimate with my wife. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Okay, fine, calm down, sit down here. Then he said, Ask him, he goes, Okay. Do you have a slave that you can free? In the Arabic language, the word slave is raqaba, which means neck. Why? Because they used to actually, Audu Billah, trap the, the, uh, the slaves around their necks with, with chains. So that's why they call it free a neck. Free a neck from, that, from those chains. So the Prophet ﷺ told him, do you have a neck that you can free? And the man, he goes, Qala ya Rasulullah, the only neck I own is this one. Like, ah, I can't afford playing. I don't have anybody to, to free. He goes, okay, fine. Can you fast two consecutive months? And he said, Qala ya Rasulullah, wa hal utitu illa min as-siyam? He's like, Ya Rasul, like, I, I couldn't hold it for one day. You want me to fast two more months? Like, what am I going to do then? Like, I'm in trouble because of fasting to begin with. He goes, okay, do you have food to feed 60 needy people? He goes, I honestly know nothing. I have absolutely nothing in my house. So the Prophet said, okay, fine, just sit down here. We will find a way for you. At some point, the Prophet, وسلم, he received a gift of food. Somebody came, mashallah, they had brought a lot of food. And it dates, basically. So the Prophet ﷺ, he started looking, he said, where is that man who was asking about his kafara? So the goes, I'm here, Rasulullah, still waiting. He goes, okay, take this food and go and feed 60 needy people. And the man, he looks at the Prophet ﷺ, he goes, you want me to give this to, poop, to people who are poorer than us and my household? Like, Ya Rasulullah, if you look around the whole city of Medina, you won't find anyone who is poorer than us. And the Prophet says, smart, he goes, fine, give it to your family. And he went just happy with food, subhanAllah. The idea is that it wasn't haram, but doing it during the sanctity of time in Ramadan, it's a sin. And requires kafara, requires actually a lot of subhanAllah compensation for that. So therefore, even though things are halal, but if you're unable to control yourself during the day, make sure to avoid anything that might lead you to break the sanctity of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect you all, Ya Rabbil Alameen. With that being said, let's go to the question and answer, inshallah. If you have any question, feel free to scan this QR code and ask your question here.
Okay, so I have some questions here, inshallah, to begin with. Do we have to finish suhoor um, 10, 15 minutes before the adhan? The answer is no, you don't have to. The adhan is the, uh, the cutoff moment to stop eating and drinking. And we mentioned that, we talked about this last week, actually, when we talked about the ahkam of siyam, that if you had a cup of water in your hand while you're drinking, you continue to drink while, it's still, while you're drinking from it. But if you're holding it in your hand while you're eating a sandwich on the right one, you're, gonna, you're not going to do that. Don't say, well, I still have it in my hand. No. If it's already on your mouth while you're drinking, finish drinking. If you have food and you have a, a morsel of food in your mouth, finish it, but don't, eat, don't take another bite. That would be it. Once you hear the adhan, it's over. If you don't hear the adhan, then at least the calendar. Which calendar do I follow? Follow the calendar of your closest masjid. If I'm not fasting because of medical reason, is the time before Maghrib Adhan a good time for dua acceptance for me too? Actually, you get double the opportunity for, for the dua to be accepted. Because it's Ramadan and because you're ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you shifa, ya Rabbil Alameen. Is a wife required to cook during Ramadan? <laughs> it's the husband who's required to cook during Ramadan, Jama'ah. <laughs> It's not a matter of requirement, ya jama'ah. Allah, it's not a matter of requirement. It's a matter of ihsan to each other, really. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعَاشِرُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Treat each other with, in kindness, with kindness. In Ramadan, what do we expect from each other? The family expects from the, for the mother and the wife, of course, to serve them the, the good foods of Ramadan. And she also return expects what from the family? To help out. If not with the cooking, at least the clean up. I don't want to stay all my day and night in the, in, in, in the kitchen because I want to also do my ibadah. Well, alhamdulillah, part of the ibadah is preparing the food and taking care of the household. So the question specifically, is she required to cook during the month of Ramadan? Look, al-ulama, they say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, bil You treat each other in that which is considered bil ma'roof. What is equitable? What is considered customary? So part of the customary uh, uh, behavior, or at least the tradition of the, of the community, is that men, women serve each other in a certain way, then we go by those traditions. Yes, I would say, in this case, yeah, we should cook, actually, the meal for the household. But here's the thing. Do you have to cook every single day? Does it have to be a three-course meal? No, not necessarily. You can have, if you can have one meal and, and eat mush in three days, or you can have uh, uh, just one single course for, that, for the whole meal, instead of you know, having three courses, meals of sweets and this and that. Again, we go back to what is bil ma'roof. Wallahu alam. For women and the house responsibilities, can I make intention to make itikaf for a couple of hours by myself at night? If you're talking about house, making itikaf in the house, that doesn't count as an itikaf. May Allah subhanahu wa reward you for the intention. But you get your reward, inshallah ta'ala, for the intention. And hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, for dedicating that time for the ibadah at home. But if you're talking about making itikaf in the masjid, the, 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 the technical itikaf, that the Prophet ﷺ practiced is actually the whole ten, not, last 10 days of Ramadan. That's the technical atikaf. Because the purpose of it is to try to catch Laylatul Qadr. But the linguistic atikaf, which means to stay in the masjid for some time, it can be any time of the day and the night. And it doesn't even have to be in the month of Ramadan. So if you dedicate two hours of the night in the masjid to do some partial atikaf, may Allah accept from you, Rabbil Alameen. It's not really a technical atikaf, but it's a, a linguistic atikaf, which means you brought yourself into the masjid for two hours, make an ibadah, and dedicate your time for that. May Allah accept from you, Rabbil Alameen. It's okay. Will there be atikaf accommodations at VRC? Uh, we have already actually, the list is available, and there are two, nine people so far who are registered for the atikaf so far. In regards to your atikaf, will your atikaf break if you leave the masjid to uh, head to work and then come back? Yes. It will, that wouldn't count as atikaf, actually. Unless you work from, from the masjid, yani. you bring your laptop with you. As for the ladies, I don't think we have actually enough space or accommodation for the sisters here in, in, in the masjid for atikaf. How can I remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more during my day? Well, like I said, even when you run errands, Simply just say, Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Wala ilaha illallah, Wallahu Akbar, Wala hawla, Wala quwwata illa billah al-Ali al If that, inshallah, ta'ala keep saying it regularly, would be great. If you have your phone with you, make sure that your phone is playing maybe Quran in your pocket. You have your AirPods, for example, listen to it as you run errands as well too. 
There are many different ways where you can make itikaf, inshallah ta'ala. And sometimes the itikaf could be tadabbur. What does that mean? You don't pronounce, you don't say anything, you don't listen to anything, you simply, you're quiet, but your mind and heart are trying to focus on Allah's creation and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, yani khayrat that he blessed bless us with. That moment of contemplation is also part of your dhikr, inshallah. Can women do itikaf on the weekends at the masjid? I mean, it's open, so eventually we're going to be open it, inshallah ta'ala, for all, uh, every night. So yeah, it's for everybody who will come to partial itikaf, they can do it during the night, inshallah, azza Can you please give some tips for college students fasting while going to college? How to manage their time with attending college housework or homework and tests and so on? Uh, somebody's saying, toughen up, youth. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Honestly, I also want to remind myself and my young brothers and sisters that going to college is not your, you're not going يعني, to uh, what Allah Musta'an. It's, it's not that that of a big deal really. We're making big deal out of nothing. A Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala where they used to live in the desert. They used to go out in the sun, and they used to go and farm the land over there. Go after the sheep and the camels in the middle of the desert. The Jama'ah Sahaba they used to travel with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when they were going to Mecca. And there was Ramadan, and they were fasting on a journey in the desert. And we complained that we are unable to focus because it, we're fasting and so on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. I think the, the, if you think of this to be difficult, if you think it's going to make it hard for you, you're going to eventually end up actually feeling it to be hard. But if inshallah ta'ala, if you focus on doing uh, the right thing for Ramadan and realize it's not of a big deal, it's going to be easy on you to do it inshallah ta'ala. My son doesn't want to participate in Ramadan activities. Just make a lot of, lot of dua for him. What about those who fast, but it makes their behavior worse? What advice do you give them? May Allah forgive them, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Again, fasting is supposed to make you become more righteous, right? But some people, they take that opportunity. They, we all joke about it. We say, look, um, when you're hungry, you're angry, right? We say this as a joke, but it's a serious matter. If your fasting is not making you a better person, may Allah forgive you. I'm not saying break your fast, but you need to really to realign your understanding of fasting and what you're doing. How do we make our heart soft? Volunteer. Go volunteer and feed the poor. Really, when you go and see the poor and the orphans and the homeless and so forth, I hope inshallah it will soften your heart. How do we incorporate the things that we do in Ramadan even after it is over? Ramadan is just a, a, a limited, limited number of days. But the mercy is unlimited. So it's up to you. If you want to just limit your mercy to the number of days, but if you want to keep that mercy unlimited, then don't think of Ramadan to be just only 30 days. The spirit of Ramadan is endless. Do eye drops uh, nullify the fast? No, they don't. Even if you feel the taste or could, you kind of like have it in your throat, you'll be fine. If someone wronged you and you told someone about it, does that consider backbiting? Well, if you were talking about the person and the personality of that individual, then yeah. But if you're talking about what happened, then no. Like I was saying, he or she is this and that, talk about them in a bad way, that's backbiting. But tell them what exactly happened as is, that's not backbiting. What did you mean by eating suhoor late? We mean by that to eat right before the adhan, like 10 minutes, 15 minutes before the adhan. That's the best time for the suhoor. Sahaba, they used to say between the suhoor and the adhan was about reciting 50 ayah from the Quran. How to maintain interest in worship? You need to um, alternate. What does that mean? Uh, uh, diversify your ibadah. That's number one. Number two, as you make your ibadat, you also take time for recreation. So that, alhamdulillah, your body rejuvenates and your spirit rejuvenates and you go back to the ibadah. But if you always focus on the ibadah, 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 you don't give yourself a break at all, and you do the, the same thing over and over again, over and over again, you're going to get tired and exhausted. Uh, people ask me, what is my Ramadan routine? Don't talk to the imams about the Ramadan routine, Jamaah. Because the imams have their own unique routine, not because for themselves, for everybody else. You guys enjoy Ramadan, inshallah.
Okay, there are so many actually more questions, but I think time is up, inshallah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, Rabbil Alameen. I make this Ramadan, a blessed Ramadan to all of us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who witness the letter of Qadr, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who benefit from the month of Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us with his mercy, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill our heart for the love of this deen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to unite our hearts in goodness for his sake, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why we gather in this place and we gather in Jannah for Dawsid A'la with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam al-Saliheen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa baraka'a nabiyyana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.